Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Returning to tonight's top story, after four years leading the city's public housing authority and in the eye of a storm of controversy over the last several months, Shola Alatwaye announced today that she'll be stepping down at the end of the month. She joins us now in our studios. Welcome. Very good to see you. Nice to see you, Errol. Um, what, th this is unusual in the sense that there are a number of other commissioners, high-ranking officials who have left in, in different kinds of ways. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody uh, in the middle of so much controversy in an agency that seems to be so troubled get the kind of send-off that you, in effect, got from the mayor today. Um, is, does, does he want you to leave? Does he want you to stay? What, what is going on here? Look, you know, first of all, I think the mayor and I, the mayor has been, has really placed NYCHA at the forefront of the discussion about what kind of city we want to be. And um, he had the vision and supported myself and the team to lay out some very uh, important components of a, a changing NYCHA. And so, you know, while my conversations with him were about the first term, this seems like the right time for me to move on as we have del I have delivered to him uh, the work that I committed to do. Um, and I, I am confident that the team um, that is in place can really take it to the next level and really work on the important progress that we've made, notwithstanding the many challenges. Um, but I, 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 I believe that this is the right time for this administration um, that has made unprecedented investment in public housing um, to, to, to move on to the next phase of Next Generation NYCHA. When, when did you decide that um, you, were, you were ready to go? You know, look, I, I, you know, as I said, I, I had planned to stay for four years. That was my commitment to the mayor. And so what, what, um, what he asked me to do was to continue to do work on the many challenges before us, but also um, help to get a near final set of uh, agreements with um, the ongoing work with the Southern District. And I believe that that is a conversation that is um, coming to an end. Um, so it feels like the right time. So when you say the, the conversation with the U.S. Attorney's Office is coming to an end, uh, the, the, the inference or the, the assumption some people will make is that uh, you're anticipating some bad news, that as um, both HUD, the U.S. Attorney's Office, increasingly now the state, um, all uh, decide that they want to sort of be cooks in the kitchen and help manage NYCHA, that um, you either sensed or perhaps were told that new management was going to be put in place whether you stayed or not. No, so I, I think that's I said, so two things. One, I think the fact that we now have three levels of government focused on what the future of public housing looks like in New York City is a good thing. And I have been very public about um, welcoming that because I think it is exactly the kind of, frankly, shield that the agency needs to do some of the hard things that have been quite challenging for us to move forward. While we have done it, I think this is an opportunity, this focus is an opportunity to go even farther. So I stayed and actually to, to, to get to this um, place and, and now it is up to uh, Mr. Brezinoff and Vito Masachulo and the mayor to um, continue this important work. Um, and, and any regrets about how the last few months have gone? Is there anything significant that you wish you could do over or would have done differently? You know, look, I, I, said, I, think I said this t earlier today. I mean, this is a complicated and complex organization. And I think in four years there have been, there's been incredibly important work driving down repair times, getting a billion dollars of work out on the street, um, launching the largest development program in the history of, of, of the housing authority and any housing authority, um, as well as retraining um, our staff to really join the digital age. Um, you know, I wish I had earlier and better information about the health and safety issues and compliance gaps that came to light. Um, but you know what? We, when we did find that out, we alerted and acted and created a plan and are working on that. And there is now an infrastructure and a path forward for the team to carry on, uh, on, on to the next phase. Uh, I, I spoke today with uh, somebody who's outside of NYCHA, but very wise about the ways of government, who suggested that uh, your life and your, uh, your time at NYCHA would have been a lot easier if you could have changed around some of the union rules that um, were 
a source of controversy in the past. What, what's your take on that? Look, I, I've been very candid about the need for real labor reforms at the Housing Authority, and, and, and it's something that you and I talked about on this very show sure. when we launched our demonstration program called Flex Ops, which was um, our attempt to provide a longer day of service um, to our residents, um, actually having staff on site from 7 a.m. in the morning, 6 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. We now have that at 12 developments, and you know the data bears out the, the hypothesis. The developments are cleaner, the staff are happier, and the residents are happier. I think this is something that should be expanded into the entire authority. Is, is there uh, a chance to um, either build that into collective bargaining or, uh, or, or otherwise uh, make it real? You know, I, 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 I have been very, very for forceful about hoping that that is the case, and now it's the work of Mr. Brezinoff and Vito to take that forward in, in concert with the, with the administration. Um, if, um, if the... This, if City Hall had been more involved with helping you negotiate that, do you think you could have gotten the union rules changes so, that so you were seeing? It's hard, it's hard for me to sort of engage in sort of hypotheticals. Look, any organization um, and any turnaround effort has to set a series of priorities. I think we set the right priorities. I think we, um, those, we, we acted accordingly. Um, you know, are there things that are still left to be done? Yes, and I think that's why um, Stan and, and Vito can, are, are the right team to help move, move that conversation forward. There was some talk about um, finding a, a new CEO for, for the authority. Um, who would want the job at this point, right? <laughs> I mean, it seems, it seems like, um, you know, almost the definition of a thankless job. You know, public service, I think, is someone said is the rent that we pay to be on earth and for me it has been an incredible privilege to work um, in this administration to meet residents all across the city um, who are good hard-working people who really do power this city um, and to work on behalf of the 11,000 men and women who who work for the Housing Authority I think that there are tremendous individuals throughout the country who would see it as a challenge within which is what I did mm -hmm. and I think supported um, with a mayor who gets it, um, with an opportunity to leverage all of this attention to actually get work done on behalf of the residents, I think that's assignment, an assignment someone would be willing to take on. Well, well, part of what comes with the assignment is there are a number of people who um, use NYCHA and its CEO as a convenient punching bag, right? I mean, it's very easy to find a dilapidated unit, a problem somewhere in this vast, very large uh, organization, and hold a press conference and wave a piece of paper around and so forth and so on. Um, I wonder if um, in uh, th the last few years, as people have, perhaps in good faith, tried to draw attention to problems within the authority, um, did they work with you as a partner or did you, did you see some of the, the, the reports that came from the controller DOI, you know, most recently Governor Cuomo, were, were, those, were those critiques done in good faith? Did they talk with you about ways to actually improve problems instead of just um, announcing them? You know, so, so look, I think it is, you know, four years ago, if you weren't running for office, you weren't talking about public housing. We weren't having a conversation about, you know, the one in 14 New Yorkers who, you know, deserve to have heat, who deserve to have, you know, safe hallways and clean hallways. And so, you know, again, I think it is an opportunity that should not be wasted, that you have a variety of stakeholders who are interested in supporting housing. Now, the question is, will we squander that interest um, mm -hmm. because people move on to the next thing? I hope that isn't the case. I think that we have made the case for um, an organization that was essentially bankrupt four years ago that is now stabilized operationally, that has a team in place and a financial plan that is delivering today um, ahead of HUD's own expectations around capital deployment. And, you know, I, I hope that this can really start a real conversation that benefits the New Yorkers who live in public housing. And I guess the, the big question, I've asked you this before, if, if you know you have a 20 plus billion dollar uh, capital deficit, meaning that's the amount of money needed Needed to bring the, the entire housing stock up to good, good working order, uh, and you have only a fraction of that available, even doing amazingly creative things, but you've mm -hmm. still got, you know, say, less than a quarter of that available. Right. 
Um, what, what's the future for NYCHA, and can this administration see it through? So I think it's a great question, and, and I think it really does, it helps us to put it in context, right? NYCHA was a federal program, and it was never meant to be permanent housing. And what we now have is a federal government that has largely walked away, um, and the question is, you know, are we municipalizing public housing?